All right. Hello, everyone. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And I sent you out an email earlier today, and that email said, as you can see on your screen, today was a kind of a cluster, you know what kind of day. I made two videos, and in their entirety, they were almost four hours long. The first one was two hours and 42 minutes, and I did the Project 2-2 from scratch. I had some problems with it, but by and large, it all worked. All right. When I got done, the video, the file said it was corrupted, so I've run it through a program twice to try to recover it, and it has failed both times. It is now running a third time where I'm trying to recover it. I don't hold out a lot of hope. Then with my hour and about nine minute long video I made where I redid the chapters nine through 11 pretest from scratch, that video also was corrupted and will not load. That one is just literally, that's gone. So as I said, I'm not in a great mood right now. So what I've decided to do is the following. I've decided that for assignment project 2-2, Instead of making it worth 25 points like we do for most homework, it's worth 10 points, but it's worth 10 points of extra credit if you want to give it an attempt. I really don't have the time. I don't have the wherewithal to, to, to tape this again. I'm sorry. So if you've turned in the assignment or if you turn it in by next Wednesday, the 21st, you're eligible for up to 10 points of extra credit. If you don't turn anything in for Project 2-2, two, two, you're okay. All right, and as of right now, in just about two minutes, I'm going to be retaping the the uh, pretest in the chapters nine to eleven. I'm going to start that in just a moment. But before I do that, and that is not what I wanted to do. But before I do that, This is how my day has been. This look, you know, you see how this is loading right now. I don't know what's going on. If I have a machine problem or something else, I really don't know. Oh goodness. Okay. All right. This morning, I got an email, we all did, who all of us who work at Rankin, from Mr. Don Pohl, who is our president. And what he mentioned is next Monday is Juneteenth Day. All right, as it says, it's an American holiday that commemorates the end of slavery in the United States. So Rankin has decided that they're going to close for Juneteenth Day, so there will not be classes on Monday. Originally on Monday, the 19th, I was going to do two of the five problems that you are being assigned for chapters 9, 10, and 11. Two of the five homework problems. I'm still going to do that, but I'm going to do them this weekend. I don't know when. I forgot that it was Father's Day, so we'll see. Uh, but I will have them done by Monday. All right, and I will send you a link to the video. It'll be private because I'm doing homework. All right, secondly, as you can see, Rankin has also decided to close July 3rd as July 4th falls on a Tuesday. So we are now out two days from class, the 19th, of June for the Juneteenth celebration and the 3rd of July as an extension of the July 4th holiday. What that means is we're losing 13 hours of class, 8 to 2.30 a day. This I'm making up by doing a lecture this weekend. The other one I'm not really worried about. All right. I contacted Mr. Gudmisted and I said, hey, since they're doing this and since we are, uh, since we are doing this, does that mean we have to extend our classes? And he wrote back saying, uh, we're getting a letter or an email from our uh, the VP of, of uh, Student Affairs on that. And she said, no, once we've set a start and an end date, we can't change that. So no class this coming Monday 
due to the Juneteenth celebration. Also, no class Monday, July 3rd. So what I'm going to do right now, or attempt to do before your very eyes, is to take this pretest that we were talking about, the one right here, the match the president's game, and do it for you. But as we start, what I want to tell you is this was the this is the main form right here. All right, and you'll notice on here we've got what one, two, three labels. I've given you this already. Two combo boxes or drop down lists, one, two, three, four buttons, a group box, three radio buttons, and a picture box. All right, why am I telling you that? Because this technically is the main form. So I set it up as the form that comes up at the beginning. All right, and when you click help, it brings up this one, which has some instructions on how you are supposed to do this, play this match the president's game. It's got to follow us. So it's got what? One label, two labels, one button, two buttons, one group box, three check boxes, and one multi-line text box. What the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this the opening form and the other one be the secondary form, the one that opens. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So to, to start with this, where is it now? Uh, let's see. This is what I sent you this morning. No, it's not. I'm going to get rid of that because I was playing around and did some stuff this morning. So I can keep that, put that over here. I'm going to try to see if I can move this. I tried to before. That's what it said. It won't let me. Son of a gun. I'm trying to figure out how that is even open, but it says it's open someplace. So let me see. That may be from where it was open before. I don't know. Okay. I don't think it is, though, but we'll see. Son of a gun. Mm. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, this is what I sent you, this chapters um, 9 through 11 pretest. Okay? That's what I had sent you. And there's the pretest. And fortunately, unfortunately, whatever you want to say, let's see. Let's see if I've got that one in here. All right. So here it is. I'll bring it up. If this is an empty pretest other than the folders, we'll work with this one. That's what my hope is. No, it has code in it. So I think this, I went and finished this one, but let me check. Okay, it is partially finished. That's good. Totally fine. All right, so let me go back and get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of everything that I put in here. I want this to look exactly the way you saw it when you got it today, or as close to that as possible. All right, so here is that what called the help form, and it's empty, as you can see. That's good. Now let's bring up the other one, which is this president match game or form. And let's make sure that that one is empty. And that is. So we are now working with totally a, a program that has two forms in it and nothing else. So I can go, it won't even play the game, I won't exit, nothing works. That's exactly what I want. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this form that's called FRM Help, and I'm going to change the name or rename it to FRM Main. Now it says, are you sure you want to change it everywhere? Yes, I do. And you'll notice that it even changed it here. All right. So this is the form that should come up first. Not our main form, but this form. That's exactly what I want. Okay, so we've got this done. Let's make let's do this form right now. Originally, this said FRM President's Match. So when you ran the program, 
it looked like this. It came up like this. Again, nothing is filled in yet, but that's okay. I am changing it so that the first form that comes up is not FRM president match, but this new FRM main. So again, when I run the program, the first form that comes up is this one. All right. I have changed the name of my button here from main or whatever it said before. What did it say before? It had earlier said home. So rather than home, it now says play game. All right, so I made that change, just so you know. But let's write all the code in here. The first thing that we want to do is when this form comes up, all right, when the form comes up, Let me close everything that's open right now. All right. So when our main form comes up like this, we want the instructions for how to play the game to be in here. All right. So that's the first thing. So let's do that first. All right. So I'm going to come to the code. And in my form load event here, I am going to come in and <clears throat> we could do this in different ways. We could use a string builder again. We could do other things. I'm going to go back and go. Some of this will be a little classic as far as what we've done. So I'm going to say string output str equals nothing. And then just fill out output str plus equal. And I'm going to copy this. So I've got it in here three times. All right. These are going to be my instructions for the game. So this says choose a first name and a last name from each of the combo boxes and then i want there to be a couple blank lines so backslash r backslash n i have to do that rather than just a backslash n because this is a text box backslash r backslash n let's make sure that that worked all right, if it worked, I should now have this. I'm going to have to say txt instructions.txt equals output string. So let's see if I get that in there. So there's my first line. Choose a first name and a last name from each of the combo boxes. Okay, then next I want to say, then click the, and it, on, originally it said match button, but I don't want it that because it says, it originally said uh, something, but it is the button actually does say match button to see whether or not you are correct. Backslash R backslash N backslash R backslash N period. Put a period after this one too. All right. Whoops, I don't know what happened there, but, okay, so now I should have two lines in there, and you'll notice I do. Somehow my period got moved over, but that's okay. We'll fix that. So we now have two of our three lines in there for our instructions. Period should come before that. All right, finally, one more line. I want this to say, to keep the game simple, only the last 15 US president, president images are shown, okay? So let's see if we've got all three of those lines in there. And we do. I'll fix that in just a second. So now we have our instructions. So you know how to play the game. So that's the first thing. Let's fix that TO right there. Okay, so we've got all that done. I'm just going to walk down and do it in order. Okay, in fact, let's not even do it in order. What else do we have? We got our exit. So let's do our exit program or not. 
All right, I'll have to find that from another program. Private void exit program or not. All right. So let me see. Do I have that in here any place? I thought that I did, but I guess I don't. Do I have it in here? Of course not. We'll find it from an old program. Okay. There's our exit the program routine that we've used several times this semester. So right now that should work. After, let me comment that out for now. All right, so that should now work. Exit, no, exit, yes. Okay. So that's the first thing that I'm concerned with in there. All right. So I've now got my exit button in there and it works. Now you may or may not have noticed this, but I also have a thing in here that I want when I exit, I want it to look and if this is checked and or this is checked and or this is checked, I want to give the user a message that says you're following us on Facebook or you're following us on Instagram, or you're following us on Twitter, or some combination thereof. So I'm going to write my own little routine in here that I'm going to put right up above the exit program, right up above exit. So right here. And I'm going to call it what it is. Show check boxes selected. All right. And it's going to be pretty simple and straightforward. I'm going to have a string that I'll just call selected, that I'll set equal to the empty string. Then I'm going to have three if statements. So if CB for checkbox, so if the Facebook one is selected, selected plus equal CB Facebook dot text plus a blank space. All right, now I'm going to check all three. So that's Facebook. Then this is Instagram. And this one's Twitter. Not Twitter. Twitter. All right, and if it turns out that any of them have been selected, so if selected dot trim equal equal, if it's not equal to nothing, that means that I have selected one of these. So I will do Our message box, just do it right here, dot show, and it says you currently follow us on and then whatever you selected, and we'll say social media, media presence. All right, we'll do a message box buttons, and it's not an error, so we'll make it information. It's not an error. We're just showing you at the end. So let's try that. Now, this line down here, right before we exit, that said show 
probably a big yes. Show checkbox button selected. There it is. Okay. Now, when I run this, I'm going to click Facebook and say exit. Yes. And it says you currently follow us on Facebook. So that worked. Run it again. Instagram. You currently follow us on Instagram. Good. Run it again. Twitter. You currently follow us on Twitter. Good. Facebook and Instagram. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Facebook, Twitter. You follow us, Facebook, Twitter. And Twitter and inst Instagram and Twitter. You follow us on both. Finally, one last time, let's check all three. You follow us and all three are listed. And I guess this is the last time. With nothing listed, exit, boom, we just quit. So all that works. All right. So what's, what's left then? Okay. We now have the exit button done, but we don't have this. We're on the other one. We now have <clears throat> on our main form, we have this exit done, but we don't have play game done. There's nothing there. So what do we want to do? Well, we've gone through this already, but, but, Let's review it. So we'll call here show the play the game for. Private void. Show the game. Please show the game form. So what do we want to do here? All right. Well, we want to do three things. First, we want to hide the current form. And you do that by saying this dot hide. Okay. So what should happen when I run this now and I click this, this form should disappear. And it does. So that's working. Okay. So that's first thing. <clears throat> Next, for second, we want to instantiate. In other words, we want to create a... A new play the game form. All right. So we want to say that's called FRM President Match. All right. And we'll call it PM for President Match equals new President Match. Finally, we want to show the play the game form. Okay, so that literally is just a PM dot show dialogue like that. Let's see if that works. So in other words, when I do a file, save all, and I come in here and I click, this should go to the other form, and it does. All right, I can't go back yet because I haven't put any code into this form. But now all of my code in the main form or the first form or the old help form works. All right. So I'll put here declare and build output string that goes in the txt instructions dot text text box that's what we're doing here and here we can say put output str text into this text box 
All right. So here, it's pretty obvious. We're calling show the game form, hide the current form, instantiate or create a new one, show the new one. Okay? So this will contain zero or more of the social media things. Um, things isn't a great word, but all right. If this is checked, all right, following on Facebook. If this is checked, you're following on Instagram. And if this is checked, you're following on Twitter. All right. So if one or more check boxes are checked, show a message box with the appropriate check checked check boxes shown or checks check box values shown all right i think that's about i mean that's a lot of comments but i'm doing that on purpose this is the exit program so there's nothing new there all right so hopefully that was enough and i will save this when i get done but that's enough to get you going here. All right, so that's this one. So let's open up the other one, which is called FM President Match. That's this one here, all right? So we're going to go through and kind of do it the same way, all right? What do I mean? Well, first of all, this is a little out of sequence, but where I've got help here, I don't want that there. I don't want that to say help anymore. I want it to say go to main form. So this help thing that's in there, I just got rid of it. It should be gone from here now. You know how we do that. We've done that before. All right. So we've got that done. Now I want to change the name of the button and the name of the text in the button. So I want this to be called BTN go to main form. And I want the button itself to actually say, go to main form. There you go. Now we've got that done. All right. Let's do the easy stuff first, if you don't mind. So the first thing we're going to do is our exit. Should look pretty familiar by now. Let me move this load. I want to put that up at the top because that's the first thing we do is the load stuff. All right, so for our exit, we're going to do the old familiar exit program or not, just like we had done previously. All right, and I'm going to grab it from the one that we had just done it on here, right here. So let me grab that exit program or not that was down here. All right, and let me put it in here. There that is. So we now have that done. We don't use this show checkboxes selected anymore. But that should now work. All right. It's showing me here that somehow I've removed my last curly brace. So let's look and see if that one works. So I can play the game. If I click exit, no, exit, yes. That's done. Next, let's clear. What do we want to do? When we click clear, when we click that, I don't want that to show exactly right now, but we want to clear this so that it looks just like this, so nothing's showing. We want this to clear. We want this to clear. In other words, we want it to look the way it does right now. I'm going to break this up into three different routines, one that will clear these two, one that will clear this, one that will clear these three. All right? So I'm going to call from here my clear all and in my clear all I could do this all in one routine but I'm gonna make it three three routines 
I'm going to call clear combo box text. Then I'm going to call clear picture box image. And finally, I'm going to call clear radio buttons. I will call it clear radio buttons checked. Like that. So let's write these. So to clear that text, I'll just say DDL first name dot selected index equal negative one. So nothing will show. Then do the same thing for the last name. Okay, let's see. Well, we can't see right now yet if that works or not because there's nothing to put in there. So let's do our private void clear picture box image. That's a nice one because it's nice and short. So we just say pb dot image equal null. That'll clear that one out. So we've got left this clear radio buttons checked. So that'll just be RB for radio button. And I, I usually call them R rad, but just as long as you're consistent, call them what you want. Democrat dot checked equal false. RB Republican dot checked equal false. RB Independent dot checked equal false. All right, so all that is now done. So in other words, when you look at this, that button is done, that button is done, that button is done, and our load button is done. So we've got to do the match. And in order to do that, the first thing that I want to do here, check my time, oh, I'm doing fine. All right, so the first thing I want to do here is I want to grab those images. All right, I want the images and I want the array. Well, I gave you all those. Here's the images folder. There's all the images. So let's bring those in first. They might even be here already. If they are, I'm going to remove them so you can see again how to bring them in. So there's an images folder. I'm going to remove all the images that are in there. and bring them back in by right mouse clicking choosing add existing item going over to that images folder it says it's empty but I got to click over here for the file type and choose image there they are all 16 or whatever 17 however many there are add now they're all back Okay, so all my images are there. Now, I've also given you the text for the, for the arrays. So these are our global arrays. There's our first names. There's our last names. There are our parties, and there are our images. So... The images might have a wrong path. I don't know. So I'll check it in a moment. So let's come in here. And at the top, right underneath that, we'll add all this stuff. Now, how do I know whether or not my image path for each one of these is correct? How do I know that? Well, I'll grab this one. So I'll grab Roosevelt just to be sure. So I'll go to images. I'll find Roosevelt, I'll come down here to where it says full path, and I'll make sure that's highlighted, and then I will put it in here. 
So C colon, users, JP Scott desktop. Now it is different. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to myself put this in double quotes. All right, and I'm going to change these to forward slashes as opposed to backward slashes. Now, all of them are now correct. They're now all correct for the first one, but they're all wrong for all of the other ones. Okay, so let me come in here and grab this. Copy it to the clipboard. I don't know if there's a search and replace in here or not. Oh, come on, come on. Well, all right, then we're going to manually do it. I don't want to do that, but we're going to anyway. All right, so we already have Roosevelt, so we don't have to do that one. We'll start here. What I did here, I must have skipped that one. Yep. Okay, it looks like they've all been changed accordingly. And finally, I've got to do the one that is not inside of there. So right here. So I now should have all my image paths should be correct. For yours to work, you're going to have to play with your image paths as well. All right. Okay, so we now have our arrays set up, including our first names, our last names, our parties, and our images. All right, so let's come in and start doing our work. First thing we want to do is we want to fill up and display the first name combo box. Next, we're going to want to fill up and display the last name combo box. All right, so let's do both those. Okay, so first, like I said, we can actually do them together. All right, so let me bring this here, and I'm going to put in a for loop. You could do it with another kind of loop as well. So LCV equals zero. And as long as LCV is less than, I can pick any of the arrays I want. Images.length is fine. Since it's first name and last name, let's use first names. Dot length plus plus LCV. All right, let's put all this inside of those curly braces. All right, first we want to say DDL first name dot items dot add and go to our first names array LCV. 
All right, then we want to do the same exact thing for our last names. Now we can tell right away whether or not this works by going in and doing a file save all, clicking on here, gave me an error. So let's figure out what the error was. Oh, for some reason it's complaining. This has never happened before, but it's saying, what do you want here? Instead of saying application.exit, it wants me to say, I'm, I'm just going to say close. So I'm going to tell it to close the form. Never seen this before, but that's fine. All right, so I come over here. Now when I click play the game, we're going to know, is this filled up and is this filled up? There's my values. There's my values. So I can, quote, play the game now, but I won't be able to tell whether or not I did it right because I don't have anything in match. I do have my clear button working. So if I do choose one of these and click clear, Well, that's weird. It did clear, but it stopped the program. So when we click clear, clear all, clear combo box. So we are clearing everything. Why don't we just say here, I wonder if we say close but that's going to stop the program as well, I think. So let's do this again. All right. That clear button is kind of bad, for lack of better words. Okay, but we can do this and this and this if we want. But if we click clear, it's, the program's basically going to stop. But we can exit. Or we can go back to our main form. No, we can't. So let's fix that. So where's that button to go back to our main form? This has just been an odd day. I like, like right now I'm when okay, let's do this. When I double click on that, come on, go to that. There we go. Go to main form. I want to put that above my exit because, again, I don't like anything below the exit code unless I write my own, um, unless I write my own, like, show message or whatever. So in here, guess what I'm going to do? Guess what? The same exact thing I did before. When I came in here and I said, hide the current form, instantiate a new one, and show it, just like we did before, except now I don't want to instantiate a presidence. I want to say FRM main, and we'll just call it main, equals a new FRM main, and then we'll have to say main.show dialog. Now that should work. I should be able now to pop back and forth between the two forms. Play a game, go to main. Play a game, go to main. Play a game, go to main. You get the idea. All right? So the only thing that's left then is to actually handle it when we're working with matches. So that's right here. All right? Well, we could do this a bunch of ways, but I did it in the old tried and true. Bool, keep going. equal, and I wrote a new root routine that isn't there yet, so we'll get an error, check for no first name chosen. All right, well, let's write that one. So private, it'll be a bool because I'm putting it back into keep going. And it's pretty simple, okay? This routine itself is pretty simple. Again, we'll come in here with our bool 
retval equal true if ddl first name good gravy if ddl first name dot selected index if it's equal to negative one well we know that nothing is being shown so we'll do a show message yes i will write a show message in here that'll say no first name selected that'll be the message the title will be no first name let's write the show message down at the bottom so a private void show message string message string title message box dot show message title message box buttons okay and this i believe will be an error so we'll do that let's see if that works all right so if we leave the first name blank and we click match we should get an error Looks like we've got an error in our code, so let's fix that. That'll fix that one. Check for no first name chosen. Oh, I'm not returning anything yet. So if there's nothing there, I'm going to set retval equal to false. And then down here, I'm going to return retval. And it's not fossil, it's false. Okay, that errors, they should go away now, they did. So if I come in here and there's nothing here and I click, I should get an error. No first name, no first name selected. Good. Now, we probably could write this as one routine, but I'm going to grab this first name selected anyway, copy it to the clipboard and paste and now we're going to do a check for no last name selected. All right. So everywhere I'm referring to first, I now have to change it to last. That should be all of it. Let's stop the run, start, save it, and start the run again. So now, if I leave no first name in there, I get that message. If I do put in a first name, but I don't put in a last name. Oh, I'm not calling it yet. Okay, this is all good stuff to know. So what are we doing? Keep going is check for first name. If keep going, what do we know? This means there was a combo box entry, first name entry chosen. So we're going to say keep going equal check for last name. Okay, now we should be able to test that. So jump to the other screen with nothing in there. We get our no first name, no first name selected once we choose something, but don't choose a last name, no last name, no last name selected. All right, so it's working. That's good. All right, so we have now checked to make sure we've got a first name and we've got a last name. That's the only our only inputs. So if keep, oops, if keep going, Then we want to check for first name, last name, match, i.e. do both reference 
the same array element location. Okay? So, if keep going, I want to call just that. In other words, if keep going, I want to call, you know, whatever we want to call this, I guess. How about check for match? We'll get an error because, of course, it has not yet been written. So let's write check for match, which is actually pretty simple. So we'll do it down here. Well, that's kind of spelled weird. Go to main form. So that button is spelled wrong. So let's change that because I'll forget otherwise. No, that is correct. But the name is probably wrong. So let's go to here and check the name. And it is screwed up. M A I N. There we go. Okay. This should now be this. That should work good. Okay. So private void check for match and like i said what do we have to do again this is the time where you have to start playing computer here all right i'm just telling you that this is the time you have to start doing that all right i gotta change that now hopefully that fixed it looks like it did okay so check for match. What do we want to do? Well, check for first name, last name, same array element location. So in other words, if I'm trying to match, if I'm trying to match um, if I'm trying to match the first name of the first one with the last name of the first one type of an idea. Okay. So we did our check for first name, check for last name. Let's make it better because this is not, how about this? In other words, if both combo boxes are referencing the same array element locale, there was a match. If this is the case, fill in the picture box with the associated image not the greatest but that'll do so if ddl first name dot selected index equal equal ddl last name dot selected index again then we have a match all right, so if DDL first name dot selected image equals DDL last name selected image, then we can say PB president image dot image equal, and I have to put for some reason the system dot drawing dot image dot from file, and we have to tell it to go to our images folder and find the DDL, doesn't matter if I use first name, last name, all right, but I can use images, dot selected index. And uh, it doesn't like DDL, so I think I could just say images. Images dot selected index, 
All right, what doesn't it like here? We're going to fix it right now. It's got to be a little high. So system.drawing.image.from file images. We have to let it know which one it was. We're not doing that right now. So now I have to say DDL. I can say first name or I can say last name. It doesn't matter. Dot selected image. Index rather. And let's see. Get rid of that. All right. We're almost there. It's giving us an error. So this is images because that's the name of the array. No, that's not. That's images. And I don't need this. There we go. So let's see. We won't have the party yet. We'll do that in a minute or their political affiliation. We'll do that in a minute, but let's see if we can match. Let's play the game and let's use the current president, Joe Biden. There's Biden's picture. Now we have to say whether Biden is a Republican, Democrat, etc. Now our clear should work. This should clear out, that should clear out, and that should clear out. All right. Again, I don't know why it's, boom, it's killing the program there. But it is. I have to figure that out. All right. So the other thing, again, we want to do here is we want to set the appropriate political affiliation for the selected president. All right. So I made a string that I called that, even though it's kind of long. So I called it Paul affiliation. And I set that equal to party DDL. You can use the first name or the last name. It doesn't matter like that. Why did I do that? Because now I can do a switch on that Paul affiliation. And I can say... In the case that it was Democrat, we can, whoops, sorry, we can say RB for the radio button Democrat dot checked equal true and break. So that'll handle a Democrat, but we need our other two. So we'll say Republican. The order in which you put these, of course, wouldn't matter. So that's true. And then Independent. Now, Probably should put a default case in here too and just break. So if anything happens, just get out of there. Now, I think it's going to work and I think it's done, but there's one thing about this program yet I don't like. So play the game. Let's match. We'll just pick out Jimmy Carter. He's a Democrat. Match. Democrat, there's his picture. Again, I'd like to fix the clear, but I got to figure out what the problem with that is. So before we do that, let's see. I think this will give me a quick chance. I'm going to go to where we've got our clear. In fact, I'm going to go to where we've got our clear all right here, and I'm going to set a breakpoint right there. We'll set it right there. Not there. Okay, whoops, we right there. Now I'm going to go to debug windows and I thought there was a run. Watch. I thought somewhere in here there was like a run where we could have it run to that point. 
diagnostic threads, watch, auto, immediate, call stack. I'm going to quickly check. There's two things I want to fix here. And we're at a, an hour, so we're doing fine. This whole thing I'll be done probably in 10 to 15 minutes max. But coming in here, let's go over to Chapter 10. So I'm going to jump to 344. Of course, that's not going to work. Let's do it again. Come on. That you just cannot believe how slow this machine is today. Oh, and then this cancel, it, it didn't work again when I tried to do what I showed you before as far as uh, trying to fix that file. So it just, it, it seems to be corrupted where it cannot be fixed. Okay. Come on. There we go. So let's move this to 344. What was that? That is, okay, I want to go back to, I want to go to chapter 11. So, basic debugging techniques, how to use the debugging windows. Well, it's somewhere in here. Somewhere in here, there was a thing on how to make it run and stop on a certain line. I don't use it. You can tell. There's the local and the autos. Monitor expressions. I don't want to do that either. I know what I want, but I just don't know where it is. So I don't think it's a visualizer either. That, that thing is a... Ugh. All right, let me jump back again to about 344. here and try to search for a run to cursor. All right, so it looks like it's here. There, the run to cursor. It's in the code editor's shortcut. All right. How do we get to the code editor shortcut? Okay, it says that we can click on a line. So it says we don't even need this. It says we can click on a line. It should be a green arrow there. I don't see it. What I'm trying to do is figure out why, when it's boom, when it's getting to here, and it's clearing this and it's clearing this, etc. It's clearing everything like it's supposed to do, but then it's just ending. All right. I 
I wonder if I, this is going to be a kludge, but if I put this in, this is in my form load. So I'm going to come in here and do this. Um, fill combo boxes. Put that in there. Okay, that I should have done anyway. Wonder if I call exit program or not at the end of this. I just don't want this thing to be ending right here. So I'm going to run the program. I'm going to do something where I get a match. Richard Nixon. Get a match. Okay, I'm going to click clear. And it says, do I want to exit? No. But it's exiting anyway. Oh. Technically, the program is still running. All right. So what if I put in here, what if I call the fill combo boxes from here? Oops, that's wrong. Still stopping. So I guess what I'm going to have to do is after I click clear and I get to the end, I'm trying to think of a routine I can go to. So let's call this here go to main form don't want to be a btn on there private void go to main form okay now if at the end of this this is silly but if I call go to main form, there's a match. Clear. It sent me back to the main form. Okay, that's not great, but at least it's not killing the program. The other thing I don't like is this is a positional thing, and that is this. If you look here, I have Bush in here twice. So in other words, if I run this program and I play the game and I go to George W. Bush, but I put his dad in there, which is the other Bush, even though that's correct, All right, it didn't work. I, I really got an error. All right. And let's see. Now that that also showed me one other thing here, and that is that in here, if there wasn't a match, all right, if there wasn't any kind of match, all right, we didn't put an else in there, which I really should have done. So else else okay all that that stuff in the if let's see check for match we want to do this 
and we want to do this. So let me move all this over. All right, so there's my if. Now I should be able to put in an else. And now I want to say there was no match. So PB president image dot image equal, and that's going to be the other one. So that's system dot drawing dot image dot from file. And that was called no image available. All right. And then again, I want to clear. So I'll call my clear. I'll just call clear all. All right. So let's do that. And let's purposely make a non-match in here and see if it play, does that correctly. So I will do Richard Clinton. Okay, it's, it's going too fast like that, which I don't like. actually does give me a chance to show you something quickly in here all right how to create a c sharp timer all right boy oh boy what is going on with this machine look at this I don't know what's going on with this machine. It actually worked, but it went like that. It blipped way too fast. Now, when I do run the other one, so when I make it work, so there's how to create a timer. So we'll do that in a second. But when I do the other one here and I run it and I have a match, So if I have Harry Truman and I match, I get that. Then when I click clear, I go back. So what's the difference? What am I doing in the match that I'm not doing in the non-match? What if we tell it to just clear the radio buttons? I think the same thing is going to happen here. And if it does, I'll quickly show you timers if I can remember them and get some help here. Yeah, that's going way too fast like that. All right, so let's look quickly at timers. How to use a timer. Timers are controls. I want to wait for like five seconds, and then I want to go over to the uh, other form is what I'm telling you here. All right. And unfortunately, since I haven't used it in a while, I don't remember how. The other thing that I want to do is I want to check, and I want to check if the first name Oh, I don't I don't know exactly how I want to do that. So Oh, this is way too much. How to use a C sharp timer example. This looks like a, the kind I want to use, so I'm going to grab all this. 
I don't remember when I do this if I need to actually create a timer control or not. I believe I do. So I'm going to come over here. And in my, in here, I'm going to look for a timer. There it is. It puts it down here. Okay. But let's come in here and do this. All right. So for no last name chosen. Oh, and my check for match then. Either way, at the end of this. So I'm going to do this. But either way, I want to come in here and I want to put in a, uh, I'm screwing this up, a new timer. I want it to wait for five seconds. And then I want to set the enable to true. Got to make that global, that timer. So let's move that up to the top. Okay. Now I've got a timer up there. Let's see if it works. One, two, three, four five okay it's staying there because of the timer that's good but i don't think i told it after five seconds i wanted it to turn off so let's see timer enabled equal true timer not stop tick enable the timer i think is this one we want to say uh, with the radio button things, clear. Just clear all. I don't know if this will work now or not. So let's try it both with one that works and one that doesn't work. I'm hoping it's going to wait for five seconds now before it clears the screen. So Harry Truman. Now it cleared it right away. So let's see. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Five, timer enabled equal true. So that sets up the timer. This is setting it up for five seconds. All right, how about when it stops? Like I said, I should have done a better job of looking at this ahead of time, and I did not do so. So, Richard Nixon, one, two, three, four, five. Cleared. Perfect. Let's do it again and have a non match. Lyndon Bush. One, two, three, four, five. That works. Great. All right. So it's now working the way I want it to work. What this does is it created a timer control, told it that after five seconds, it wanted it to go and basically stop and then clear everything and this turned the timer on. So that's all working now. Everything, everything that's in there is now working. Good. So what's left? Well, again, I've already mentioned this to you, so I'm going to say it again. And that is this. When you look here, George H.W. and George W. both have a last name of Bush. All right. So when I'm doing my match like this, all right, when I'm doing my match, boom, I'm checking if keep going, et cetera, and it does this. If these two things are equal, all right, that's one thing. I can say, I can try this. I don't know if it'll work or not, but I'm going to add another condition in here that's going to say, or if ddl first first name dot text equal equal george 
H W. Oh, I have to make sure I set it up the same way I set it up in here. So that is George H W or George W. All right, or if the first name equals George H W or the first name equal equal George W. All right, so we've got that. And DDL last name dot text equal equal Bush. All right, now I probably have screwed up the parentheses in here. I don't know. That's also got to be dot text. All right, I'm not sure if we did it right, but now what I want is I want us to be able to choose either Bush for George and have it work. All right, you'll know right away whether or not this works. So I'm going to go to George HW. Now the matching one is here, but I'm going to go down to here. Hot dog. I should also now be able to go to George, oops, okay. I should now also be able to go to George W. Here, find the one for his dad, which is up here, and that also matches. Three, four, five, boom. Now I've got to figure out a way, I'm not going to do it right now, but I've got to figure out a way to make this stay on the screen where it's not right now. But this is now done. So file, save all. I'm going to close this. All right, it's right here. So it is called chapters nine to 11 pretest. So let's come in here and let's set up a git directory with a git init. There that is, clear that. A git add dot, all right, a git commit minus M, and I'm just going to say chapter 9 through 11, C sharp pretest, uh, Wednesday 6, 14, 2023. All right, then let's go over to GitHub. And I want to make a new repository with me, of course, as the owner. And chapters 9 to 11 pretest. Create that. That's done. Come on, Jeff. Here we go. Set our remote up. Double check that the remote is correct. All right, looks good. And finally, git push minus u origin master spin for a second come on back that's taken a long time but it's got all those images maybe that's what it's writing out i don't know As soon as this come back, comes back, hoping it comes back, um, I'm going to check on GitHub and make sure it's there. It's then send you out one last email today that's going to show the it's going to show the uh, actual path for the GitHub repo because I think what I put out there might be wrong. I don't know. Okay, come on, this is ridiculous. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to I'm going to stop taping because it's ridiculous for you to sit there and watch me do this. So. All right, I'm finished for now.
I, you'll have an, you'll get another thing from me, another email from me in a little bit.